Excellent. Okay, so thank you all for coming uh, to Mobile Portland. Um, really, really exciting presentation tonight. And um, before we begin, I want to thank the people at About Us who put up with us uh, on a monthly basis. Um, so if everybody can give them a round of applause. That'd be great. I also want to thank Adobe, which is the company that Brian works for. So normally, um, you know, when we have uh, sponsors, we or speakers, we end up thanking the, the speakers, and we will be thanking Brian. Down, but um, Adobe actually, you know, like, sent Brian here to come speak to us. Sent, <coughs> sent Brian down from Vancouver, British Columbia. So um, thank you, Adobe. Um, and there's some Adobe stickers out there. There is. So, <laughs> I don't know if I introduced myself, but I'm Jason Grigsby, I'm with Pod4, and we help organize these events, and my co-workers um, help get the beer and food tonight. Yeah! So, um, after Mobile Mondays, which is an international event, um, we call Mobile Portland simply because um, they didn't respond to emails, and um, mobileportland.com was available. So we meet every fourth Monday in September, same thing. Um, and if you're not on the list yet, uh, there's a Google group. There's also an announcement list, so you get to choose which level of interaction you'd like. Um, either just get announcements or actually converse in conversations about what's going on in the mobile space. Um, while I've got this up here, um, I'm looking for speakers for future months. Um, some of the topics that have been brainstormed for future um, presentations. Um, looking for somebody who is knowledgeable about SMS and MMS might be able to speak on that. And if you are or know somebody, please talk to me afterwards. Um, somebody who can speak to BlackBerry app development, BlackBerry market. Um, Palm Pre, although we may have a lead on somebody really big for that one, which is exciting. Um, but if you know somebody who's doing home free development, that would be interesting. Um, mobile marketing and generic advertising, that sort of stuff. Um, and then social networking and mobile, just some topics that people have suggested over the last few months. And um, I'd love to get some people lined up for the next few months. Um, and as a reminder, immediately after this, um, we will be headed over to Produce Row uh, for some late dinner and drinks, and I believe our speaker will be joining us over there. People have questions? Um, normally we do introductions, but we're starting a little late and we've got a lot of people here, so I hope um, I get a chance to meet as many people as possible and you guys get a chance to meet everybody, um, but we're going to skip that for this meeting. <laughs> Um, okay, so a couple other events going on in the Portland area. Uh, there are two other groups that meet on a regular basis, the Android group and the um, Portland iPhone group. Uh, they meet the, uh, the Android group meets the second Monday of every month. And the iPhone group usually meets the second Tuesday of every month, but they moved it this month. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Oh, well, it's just the last minute thing. Yeah. It was so, just the last minute thing. Make it, is it still going to be at the bar? We're right? thinking about changing it to mm -hmm. the third. But it, the standing place is, is pre-dragged, mm -hmm. and we'll announce as we can get it. Because the nice thing about last time is we could get um, in the pie room some meeting space with the projector. And yeah, and that. that space is open. It's just the, the, the second Tuesday we can put in so many others. Okay. So I think the, the answer is to go look at the Google group. They're usually communicating about it on there. Um, and Seth, thank you for speaking up. Um, I just want to thank Seth for coming with a camera at the last minute and saving the day. So thank you very much, Seth. Um, and I want to, uh, to introduce our speaker and talk a little bit about this. Um, I think that there is... This is a, I try to be as sort of platform and device neutral as I can in organizing mobile Portland events, but I've got to say that, that there's nothing that concerns me more right now than making sure that the mobile web is a viable platform for people who want to develop and share information. Um, there are a lot of examples of 
applications that aren't getting through in the App Store because of various reasons, and that's perfectly Apple's prerogative to do so. Um, but fuck that. <laughs> yes. um, at the same time, I mean, there's some organizations like mobileactive.org that are working on um, trying to make sure that there are platforms that are open source that people can use in, in countries with repressive regimes so that they can get information out. And so our ability to build applications with web technology, to be able to share applications, to be able to build businesses around that when it comes to mobile, I think is really, really critical for the success of this platform, whether it's iPhones or Android or whatever the case may be. Um, and so I've been working for a while, actually, to try to get uh, somebody from PhoneGap, and Brian was gracious enough to come and talk about it. He's one of the lead developers at Nikobi and also involved with the PhoneGap project and um, has all sorts of stories to share. So Brian, take it away. Um. So, thank you, Jason, and uh, thank you, Portland, here you meet us before you start. It's awesome. <laughs> and there's girls here. <laughs> this doesn't happen in Vancouver. Uh, so, I'm trying something new here. You'll have to bear with me. I'm going to use Google Docs for uh, my presentation. And uh, these are, this is a whole brand new PhoneGap presentation. We've been talking about PhoneGap for quite a while. And, uh, my job early on was to talk about why PhoneGap was important. Um, and I think that's gotten out there. And imagine, who here has heard of PhoneGap? Here, who? Okay, so you guys already probably know about it. Um, I'm going to tell you guys why PhoneGap sucks and where we're fucking at. Which is a bit different, I think, than most open source projects. Um, there's a lot of challenges when you get into open source. There's a lot of problems with different open source projects. And uh, what I want to do is make sure that you guys know what you're getting into before you get into it. So it's not all roses, uh, but it's pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, so you guys are probably aware that uh, mobile app development is really tough to do. And uh, who here has written a mobile application? So about half of you. So the other half is like, fucking That's awesome. Uh, mobile app development's growing. This is why it's hard. This nightmare is the situation that we're faced with today. Um, <laughs> there are more mobile devices than just these, um, but these are the ones that count the most. And uh, there's a bunch of reasons for that, but we won't have to get into it. Um, there's Objective-C in the iPhone. And everyone loves the iPhone. I have one. I love it. Um, who here has written Objective-C? Who here likes Objective-C? <laughs> They're all over there. Uh, whatever. I mean, it's a language. Uh, there's, there's the BlackBerry OS, which is Java, but you have to run it on Windows XP. Fuck. I don't know why. And then there's Google Android, which is actually pretty cool. I like it a lot. Uh, Windows, whatever. Nokia is pretty cool. Um, it does everything, except for it doesn't do anything well. So you can do it any way, just whatever you end up doing sucks. Uh, <laughs> Palm Web OS uh, is pretty cool. Uh, we like it a lot in Adobe, and we think they nailed it when it came to the approach. Um, so that's the current situation. If you want to build an app, you've got to build it six times. If you want to hit all these devices, but it gets worse, because if you want to distribute your app, this is how many app stores there are right now. Um, and actually, I'm missing a couple. I realized uh, today that um, we've got Sony's in there, Ericsson Play now, um, Nintendo announced one as well. So that's a pain in the ass. And how do you solve all this fragmentation? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you could like use the internet. <laughs> that might fix it, right? That seems like a good idea. Um, so these are the fundamental underpinnings of the PhoneGap project. We're web developers at Nitobi. We write web applications. That's what we do. And um, we believe in cross-platform, which is the web. We believe in open standards, which is the web. We believe in open source. And that's what the PhoneGap project is for. So PhoneGap itself, where are we at right now? Um, 
We just added Windows Mobile last week. I regret to inform you that it's running on my E4. <laughs> Don't worry, no one uses Windows Mobile. <laughs> Does anyone here use Windows Mobile? There he is. <laughs> I heard about you. I use it for a long time. I have like a twelve hundred dollar phone I bought a few years ago and it wastes me up now. Um, we're uh, actively working on Nokia and Palm, and I told you right now, we haven't released anything for Nokia because we're taking two approaches to it. Um, there's the good way to do it, which is with WRT, and then there's the bad way to do it, which is compile your own web kit. So we're going to try both. Um, we have a shim working for Palm, but we can only run it on an emulator because we're in Canada, and who sells phones in Canada? <laughs> not Palm. <laughs> At least not yet. They, they're going to sell phones starting in three days. see if the uh, emulator lives up to the dream of the device. So far, experience, and I don't know if you guys have shared this experience, when you run your app in the emulator, it kicks ass. And then you put it on your phone and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> How do I debug this app? <laughs> yeah, so that's why we haven't really standing for Palm. Um, our goal with uh, PhoneGap is to adhere as much as possible standards. Uh, HTML5 spec is where we're aiming to go. However, obviously the W3C isn't thinking about things like, uh, I don't know, camera support in your computer. I don't know why, because you probably have a camera in your computer, but they're not thinking about it just yet. Um, so wherever they're not thinking about uh, standard, we're trying to adhere to what we think the standard might be. I'll talk to you that in a second. Phone gap's based on WebKit mostly. Um, WebKit is on most of the major devices, in fact, today, found out that BlackBerry is going to go that route, which is kind of exciting. And, um, we're stoked about that at night, Toby. WebKit kicks ass. Uh, it's easily the best browser out there. It's not the best browser um, insofar as its consistency, <laughs> but it's the best browser insofar as it's light and it's available and it's everywhere. And for these reasons alone, it kicks ass. Um, if you want to do offline development, go to SQL. Light on your browser, you've got a cache manifest which is new in HTML5, it lets you cache certain pages so you can create offline apps. The only app to my knowledge that does this right now is Gmail. Uh, I've tried to do it myself and I found the implementation super buggy, so I started looking at Gmail source, which is an exercise of insanity. Don't do it. <laughs> they have obfuscate everything. Um, CSS transitions, transforms, and animations can give you this native look and feel, and uh, you can load them in custom. So we want to build on top of that uh, with native capabilities. That's a point of phone gap. So these are the current APIs that we're going to build. Um, interestingly, when we first launched, the first thing that we did was geolocation because we were really hot on it. We thought it was going to be awesome. And uh, WebKit implemented it in the latest uh, Safari, making it look useless, but we got to remove it. That's cool, actually. That's what we want to see happen. It's a good thing. Um, but we've got accelerometer, media playback camera, device info, like your name, your Google, nothing too exciting. Uh, contacts API is actually really extensive on the iPhone. It's getting there on Android, offline, online, uh, ready events, SMS, and telephone integration. And we recently added magnometer, magnometer. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Compass man. <laughs> I don't know why they don't just call it Compass API, seriously. <laughs> I couldn't afford one anyway, so I don't care. Um, future phone gap, we're looking at the potential of doing file I.O. If you have a browser and their source, you will find that there might even be ways to do it now already that are unsupported, that I don't know anything about. Um, WebSocket, something that recently got committed to the WebKit repo, so we're going to get it from actually this the iPhone OS anyways. Um, and an SQLite wrapper, and the reason we're looking at doing this, and this will be a little more high level, is because Android, uh, Android's flavor of WebKit is, well, it's Android. It's using Google Gears, because Google did Android. And I can't think of any reason why they would do this, but they did this. And their SQLite is divergent from the SQL that ships in the iPhone. Has anyone experienced this? Good, you're lucky, don't try. 
can tell. <laughs> um, you can file the wrong function. Well, there's, there's other ways. So I think uh, session store and local store still work the same. But anyway, uh, their SQL8 is different than the one that ships. What did you mean by the other two? The other two? File I.O. and web time. What about them? Yeah, what, what are those? What are they? Yeah. File items are uh, reading and writing from the file system on the phone. Okay. And web sockets will be opening persistent uh, socket connections to the web servers. So you can do things okay. like push without having to use Apple servers. Just file you do now. Just file I.O. writing you. Use like your own source code, or you're literally talking about writing the file system, so like copying and writing files. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So big part of PhoneGap is that it's free. It's an MIT license. You can take it. You can use it. You can fork it. You can rip it apart. You can sell it. You can package it. You can ignore it, which you might do after this presentation. Um, <laughs> but it's free. It's completely free. And uh, the point of it being free is we want to enhance the ecosystem around it. Uh, at Nitobi, we make money doing services and consulting. So for us, if more people are using PhoneGap, awesome. Uh, use it, sell it, build stuff. That's what we want to have. So one of the earliest slides we used to always talk about, and we thought we were being really cool with Eastern the idea of phone gap is just to bridge the gap while web browsers catch up. Sweet <laughs> <laughs> um, So we're trying to like the purpose of the project is to cease to exist insofar as that what we want to see is the browsers to implement all these features themselves. And we think it would be a competitive advantage for a browser to implement this. And we've seen it happen already with geolocation. We imagine eventually the browser will become a first class development platform. Um, and that's what we're able to see happen. That's why we want to do this. We want to write web apps. We don't want to fuck around and see a job. Um, seriously, that's, that's what it's all about. So, that's our philosophy. Um, the real, so what I opened with and what I want to talk to you guys about really are the problems with the phone gap project, things that you might slip up on. I haven't even acknowledged the fact that I have all this awesome pixel art. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I might allude to it for a while, but seriously, that's wicked. Um, so I'm just going to run quickly through like all the things that you might run into if you want to try out phone gap. And um, yeah, and this is open for questions Stuff too. So if you guys want to get into it, just let me know. Yes. I'll add one. Git. Yes. You know, you guys never consolidate the syntax and the command the different variants. Yeah. They don't come together. It pull has there's stuff in one I want to use and there's stuff in the other I want to use and I don't want to have to merge the goddamn source. <laughs> That's a bitch, I know. <laughs> I will get into that. <laughs> that's my last point. Um, but yeah, that's true. Uh, we use Git for source control, which is pretty much the most awesome distributed yeah. version control system there is. Um, and with all that power comes the responsibility for you to learn how to merge multiple branches and cherry pick. Yeah, I know. It's a baby of the ass. That's how we're learning, man. Um, so but that's no excuse. We should make it easier. And uh, so part of the problems that we have is, uh, well, we didn't have any documentation. Actually, we did the classic software developer thing. We said, yeah, there's documentation. There's a wiki. Go out a page. <laughs> so that's how it worked out. <laughs> it's not an excuse. And, uh, so we just put this up recently. Um, and interestingly, we did it using Joint Smart Platform, which if you haven't checked out, you should check out if you're a JavaScript developer. It's awesome. Um, so you can fork this project and send a pull request, and we'll deploy it right back on the web right away. So the docs are getting there. They're not fantastic, but they're better than, well, the nothing that we have. This was uh, probably the most fortunate thing that happened with the Gap project, is that we got rejected and people got dramatic about it. <laughs> they were fucking pissed. And they blamed us. They're like, you bastards, what are you doing giving away that source code that helped me build my project quickly? Uh, and the reason people were getting rejected is because the dumb fucks were submitting their projects back to Apple named PhoneGap. <laughs> uh, 
So <laughs> Apple would flag them and then put the whole App Store review process, which I'm sure there's a few people wearing the scars from that in this audience, um, and they had issues. If you rename your project file, Apple doesn't know that you're using PhoneGap. Uh, but the better story is uh, it got us on Apple's radar. After it went through a few layers of bureaucracy and came back down again, they said, hey, you're using all the legitimate SDK stuff. It's cool. We're like, we know it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally cool. They're like, yeah, we'll, we'll accept everything from PhoneGap. Just tell them to renew their projects. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Give your project its own name. <laughs> you really need a blog post that says, hey, dumb <laughs> Yeah. It's funny, there's one person, and I thought about calling them up, but I won't do it. Um, they, they posted to this blog of App Store rejection letters, the phone, the standard issue Apple phone gap rejection letter. And then the same day, they posted the group, oh, my app got accepted. <laughs> but whatever. And his app got accepted because he renamed his product. It's good. Um, we have no tests, which seems like total heresy to software developers, myself included. This shit's hard to test. Um, actually, it turns out it isn't, but it was at first. So, PhoneGap started off as a total app. Uh, we loved the original iPhone release. We're like, sweet, hey, we're just going to write apps for this. And then Steve Jobs is like, write web apps, and we're like, yeah, totally write web apps. And the rest of the developers were like, no, I need open DL. Because I write so many games, which they do not. So whatever. And uh, <laughs> hit some objective C and Xcode, like, you want this shit? Sure. <laughs> we'll throw a map store in there, too. Put some handcuffs on you, whatever. So, uh, <laughs> Phone Gap started as a hack for the iPhone, and then we realized that we could do this shit for Android, so we did it for Android. And one of our BlackBerry hackers is like, hey man, I can do this for BlackBerry. I'm like, fuck that, you can. You <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't believe how he did the heresy that he did. <laughs> He's going to hell. He's he set cookies, and then he pulls to, to do the data back and forth between the browser and the data calls, whatever. Um, we won't have to do that anymore. So we didn't write any tests because we didn't know what we were writing for. And I think there's a good lesson for software developers in that. Um, test first, sure, if you know what the fuck you're building. We didn't know, right? So now we're at a point where we do know what we're building, and we've started working on something we call mobile spec. And uh, interestingly enough, we're working on this idea with the Titanium Accelerator guys. When we want to come up with a spec, or mobile app development that is agnostic from platforms. And so there's where it is. I think there might be one spec we've only recently started with, but it's worth checking out. Uh, the idea is that we're going to test the JavaScript. We're not going to test the implementation. So we don't want to write tests in Objective-C in Java, blah, 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 blah. We just want to test with the runs in JavaScript we can run against the abstractions that we're writing. Prove or disprove that those APIs are available. So that's cool. <laughs> so WebKit's awesome, right? We all love WebKit. That's how many WebKits we have to deal with. Though. This is the beauty and the horror of the MIT license. Um, there's a lot of forks, and not all forks are the same. There's a lot of problems with these different forks, specifically the Nokia S60 forks. It is problematic to me. <laughs> um, the Android fork. Uh, takes out a lot of the awesomeness that is HTML5 and puts in Google Gears, which is a compiled binary that you can't get into a hack, which is kind of interesting. So if you want to actually get into the hood of how Android's WebKit works, you can um, So Android's only as open source as the, the front page of the website, pretty much. <laughs> it's true, man. When you start digging, there's a lot of shit going on. Um, so, this is a problem, uh, and it's something to be aware of. We're targeting WebKit for the most part, but not web, all web browsers are the same. Uh, this slide's out of date as of today, which is awesome. Uh, right now, the BlackBerry is in WebKit, but we're pretty certain it's going to be in uh, Windows Mobile is 84, for real. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like the goals are different in any way. So these are your options, and they're definitely worth checking out. Uh, Accelerator stuff's really polished. I've played with it, I think it's great. They've got docs. <laughs> right? um, but you're locked into doing a lot of native controls, and I don't think the flexibility is there. I have some other slides I should show you guys um, that can do native controls. So here's another problem with phone gap while we're bragging on it. Um, so currently, right now, if you want to do phone gap development, you have to install all these SDKs. And then you download our source, and then you map whatever development tool you're using. So in the example of uh, iPhone development, you'll map Xcode to our iPhone source. And then you'll copy your app into each one, and then you'll compile it, and then you'll find a bug, and you'll be like, fuck! <laughs> and you gotta do it all over again for each one. Uh, this is an automation fail, this is a problem uh, as a software developer, it drives me nuts, because you know, I don't work hard. Ever. <laughs> I write tools to work hard, right? That's what we do. And uh, so we know this. Uh, we're just trying to figure out the platforms right now and get them right before we build automation tools around this. Um, but we recognize that it's a problem because our goal is to get web developers building apps. And so we started recently a project called ProGap Dev. Um, it's going to be a Ruby gem for now. I'm going to give you guys a little demo of that very quickly. Because how many developers do we have here? All right, a really healthy cross section. I think it's good. So, after you install PhoneGap Dev, it's a Ruby gem right now. We'll wrap it with a GUI. Um, and as a Ruby gem, it just gives you some really basic capabilities. So it's command line, um, which you know is not for everyone, um, but it's cool with me. And so it gives you some basic options. You can generate a project, you can install the phone gap source, you can build your app, you can get a report on supported SDKs, you can get help. So let's just take a look at the report. I've got the iPhone SDK installed. I do not have the Android SDK installed because it's stuck. And this is Mac Air, let's face it. And I uh, actually do have the BlackBerry SDK installed, but as far as this machine is concerned, it doesn't know it because in order to do that, I have to run the VMware, whatever. So we're going to approach this uh, in such a way that you don't actually have to have these SDKs installed. We've started working on a server-based option. So if the tool doesn't find the SDK local, it'll go remote to Nitobe servers. And now I can already hear the gears turning in your head. What evil shit are they up to? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to open source the whole stack, so if you want to run any of this shit on your servers, you can. Obviously, we're going to look to monetize for that at some point. We don't know that. The whole thing will be open source. So if we want to compete on service on our code, that's a philosophy of the company. Um, and frankly, we got to get it working local first before we're even to do that. So um, there's a future path for us. So the idea though would be even on a network you could write your little web app and then hit build and it'll just shit out a bunch of executables onto your desktop and you're good to go. Um, that future is not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> so phone gap dash G my sweet app will generate an app for you. This is really early data stuff. The code's out there though, if you want to check it out. Um, it's pretty cluedish, it's hacky, it's just a concept right now. So you generate your app. It's going to have two folders, config and www. Config, you'll throw in a configuration file and your various developer certificates and credentials that are required for you to jump the hoops that it takes to submit an app to one of these bureaucratic mazes of their app stores. Mm -hmm. um, the www folder has, surprise, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and that's it. Um, and then, ideally, no idea if this is going to work. Let's see. My sweet app, phone gap, dash B. Yeah, yeah. So, whatever. <laughs> Back to my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of thing you can look forward to, though. Um, that we're working on. 
Um, so another problem with phone gap is, uh, first of all, we're being forked like crazy. We're just getting forked. <laughs> uh, which is good. So people are adding all kinds of features. Nacho Man's one of the guys who has tons of features for us. Uh, sometimes we philosophically diverge on what those features are. In, in one case, he added a whole bunch of uh, native control um, stuff. And we're like, well, that's cool for you, man, but that's not the vision for our project. Because unless you want to implement those native controls for BlackBerry, which you can't, then not going to work. And so we don't take pull requests all the time, but there is awesome source out there. So how do we fix that? Well, we want to give a consistent way for people to add extensibility to the project. Um, and so, you know, plugins make sense. Um, if you look at the phone gap source for iPhone, it's essentially built this way already. You should be able to just drop an Objective-C header in class in, and you're good to go. It will be available in JavaScript. You will have to rebuild the JavaScript. We've refactored the BlackBerry code to use the command pattern, so it's the same concept. And uh, we're actively looking at doing the same thing for Android. So it's a direction we have to go. We know it's a problem and we need to address it. Um, we don't want people to get in the merge nightmare. I do recommend checking out Cherry Deck. Get Cherry Deck. It's the shit. Um, and this kind of like gets into like our source code itself. It's not super clean when you've got hundreds and hundreds of people submitting patches. Um, there's a lot of different visions out there. Our vision really is just to be the web. Uh, we're looking at, so right now, PhoneGap sources on GitHub. Uh, the kind of blessed repo is Syntaxi's repo. Uh, Brock who sits beside me in our office, awesome guy. He, um, we started the project, we put all the sub-projects underneath it. So we've got phone gap slash Android, phone gap slash Blackberry, phone gap slash iPhone. And that's not going to scale. Um, we're realizing very quickly. The only platform right now that we can consistently bet on being updated is the iPhone, and not even so much then. Um, people could be running 4.2 or 4.6 or 4.7 in the Blackberry. They could be running God knows which version of Nokia. So we need to do device level versioning for the PhoneGap project, and this is something we've realized for a little while now. And so we're switching out. Uh, we're going to be moving the blessed repo to GitHub slash PhoneGap, and then every one of those, or then on there, there will be a repo for each device. And then within each that's device. a lot of devices. Yeah. Just by looking at the logs I was looking at today, that's a lot of devices. Yeah, man. <laughs> People are going on their PSP. You guys support PSP and stuff? It's yeah, I want to, dude. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. That would be sweet. You should submit that. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to think sauce. Um, this is not a Mario graphic, but it is a pixel graphic of a DeLorean. <laughs> <That's> pretty cool. <laughs> so the feature of phone gap. This one's always exciting for people. Uh, we're adding more devices. We're going to add Nokia Palm. We are looking at the PSP. And we are looking at Nintendo DS as potential options. We're also, it's kind of a misplaced slide, but whatever. Every time I do a mobile talk, who here has got something to do with OTMP body? Nobody in Portland? Fuck, man. <laughs> Everywhere else people are talking about, they're like, what about Bondi, what about Bondi? Bondi is just like those cherries that you get in Mario 2. No perceivable benefit whatsoever. <laughs> it's a spec. There's no implementation, so we don't give a shit about Bondi. We'll look towards implementing Bondi if someone wants to throw a suitcase full of money at us. Until then, we're worried about the web. Which is why we're stoked on the W3C recently created the Device API Working Group. Um, this working group is going to target things like camera, accelerometer. We don't even know. Um, it just got started about a month ago, and it looks like they want to ratify the kind of work that we're doing with phone gap and some information, so it's something to watch out for. Um, oh yeah, that's what it was. Widgets. Widgets. Like, that's the other thing. So W3C widget group, um, it's sort of the widget spec. It's something we're looking at as an easy win for phone gap. Uh, basically, the widget spec says you can package a website as a zip file and install it offline, which seems like, who the fuck would want to do that? And you know what? There's a lot of widgets out there that are useful for people, possibly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, uh, yeah, that's about all I've got for you guys. Thanks. So, I'm curious about your uh, server side um, SDK. Um, how, how is it actually a pass like the um, licensing? Right? No, we can't redistribute their SDK, but we can run it ourselves. You can run it in the Yeah, yeah, and we will open source the whole stack to do that. That's really cool. Yeah, so we've been working with creating development images for every particular platform using VMware currently to pass it around, and it's saved us so much time. And then we're like, well, it would be easier if we could just automate this with web service. And so that's kind of the vision. Eventually, I'm hoping within the next six months, so I could have a software developer well, that's optimistic. Within the next year, I'll be able to demo on a netbook, build an app, and have a native execute with my back on my computer. And then if we open source the stack, we figure people you know, will want to do this themselves, because it creates a kind of interesting touch point, because you could add build <laughs> options like, I don't know, like, like analytics or something like that, or advertising platform. We're hoping that other people will pick it up and run with it and take it to themselves. Again, like I told you, we're not out here to um, track you into a platform. We're here to build apps for other people. So that's how, you know, I don't know how you guys make money. We make money writing software for other people. And so as a services and consulting company, the more people writing apps using our technology, the better. Um, the, uh, I wondered if you could show the emulator. Are you guys still working on that? Yeah. Yeah.
So check this out. This is pretty fun. Um, we had a guy write this in like a day. So we can say watch accelerometer. So that's sort of cool, right? Um, it did just be I think your thing's not the line thing. Well, whatever it did be vibrating. Uh, th these are quite cool. This game I suck at, but it's kind of fun. Accelerometer based game written with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You gotta get the parts, and you gotta avoid being spikes or vibrates. Uh, and I end up being wrong with it. Fuck this. And then, Firebug Light. So, this is all really cool, but it's probably only quite cool. Uh, <laughs> for, oh yeah, so screen resolution is the other. This is why we're getting that Toby's awesome. You get to work on your shit like this. Um, whatever. You can like rotate that guy. It's pretty good. You get orientation change events and that sort of thing. Yeah. I think we were dreaming when we implemented some of this. <laughs> Palm free. <laughs> it was like just announced. <laughs> oh yeah, and so check this out. It's pretty much how it renders too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Kind of neat. Um, so part of the whole build tool thing is that doing emulation device <laughs> um, Thanks for this time. Extra like ten minutes of demo. <laughs> the idea would be that you would have one place you could go to do your develop and then build it out. Um, but we're going to look at doing custom build web kit that targets specific devices so you can do this stuff properly. Because this is sort of more of a concept. Yeah. Yeah. Which JavaScript testing frameworks are you guys looking at? Screw you. Uh, but Sweet. Yeah, I like screening it a lot. I uh, used JS spec before that quite extensively. Mobile specs using screw unit. Actually, do you see uh, XUI at all? Just I heard of it, not really used it. It's a JavaScript framework that we wrote for doing our stuff, and uh, we we're quite happy with using JS spec. It's good enough. Okay. Are there uh, performance differences between the native apps and using phone gaps? Totally. Oh, and yeah, what? Absolutely. Are they enormous or are they? It depends on what you're doing, okay. right? So there's the same answer. Um, you're not, well, I was just about to say you're not going to write a game, but we have. And we've launched a few games uh, using PhoneGap. Uh, but you have to be cognizant of any game you're going to write and sort of the performance characteristics of it. I think all the rules of the web still apply. You've got Squirrelfish as your JavaScript engine fairly dependently, and it is fucking fast. So you're not going to write an OpenGL based 3D. A first person perspective shooter and have it perform an integrated reliability, but you can write a lot of apps with just basic list buttons. Uh, I thought that was part of stuff. So does that mean that if I wanted to include some native code, I'd be able to do that? Is that um, you can do that now. It's fully, it's, PhoneGap is just a collection of um, open source projects for devices. So. You can drop in a native code at any time. A lot of people end up doing that anyways. So if you want to, you know, enhance phone gap, you can use phone gap. It's just a view or something. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Quick one. I don't remember if I saw this on your list, but audio playback is that a supported yeah. feature or a it's supported feature on the iPhone and the Android? Not sure about. Actually, you know what? I think it is now supported on BlackBerry. And the guy added a bunch of other weird shit because BlackBerry has APIs for all the retarded uh, lights and buttons on it. <laughs> so you could, if you wanted to, you could like make a game that just shows lights blinking. <laughs> uh, Simon says, "Speak and spell bullshit." You can probably sell billions of them for that. So <laughs> maybe, right? <laughs> How you tilt it or something? Yeah. Simon says. On it. There you go. Uh, another cool thing that's coming for PhoneGap, I should mention, is there's some locals here. Uh, we're adding airship support out of the box. Which would be cool. We've got an airship tracker. So if you want to do push, you can do that. Using Apple's official supported SDK. 
If you want to be evil, you could do it with an iframe, but I wouldn't recommend being evil. Only with the iframe. Yeah. Only, yeah. Exactly. How's the new iframe? have some CSS pre-mumbled or is everybody writing their own stuff? What you just saw there was the default phone gap one. <coughs> it's actually, you know what? It's almost worth me like throwing out a few slides that I'm working on. This is a different talk. I kind of invited to go talk at a jQuery comp. And um, it's pretty funny because I talked to JS comp and John Hesig was like, well I'm working on a version jQuery for mobile. Good. So we didn't want to write our own version. Right? <laughs> I'm like, let me know if we can help. And then uh, he invited us to come speak at jQuery Conf. And I'm like, well, do you have something mobile for me to talk about? And he's like, I'm just talking about XUI. I'm like, okay. That's cool. So XUI is this uh, JavaScript library that we wrote for mobile. I will mean, quickly, very, very quickly, not bore you too much. Um, and I haven't done any of the cool pixel graphic slides here, so <laughs> bear with me. So these are your problems with mobile app dev, whatever. Uh, these are actually good problems because it means constraints. So we wrote XUI because of this reason. Uh, jQuery is like 24K, which is the size of your cache of your device. So if you are writing an app that has no logic whatsoever, you can use jQuery with no time penalty. Most of us want to write an app that has some logic. So uh, we wrote XUI just targeting at mobile devices. We got most of jQuery's APIs in place, and we did it in 2.4K. It doesn't have everything. It just has what you need, uh, which is usually the case of the mobile app anyways, because you're not going to do a whole lot of shit with it. Uh, whatever. And so everyone always asks us, you know, what about UI components? What about UI components? Fuck UI components, okay? <laughs> Seriously, every time you build an app using UI components, it looks like you built it with UI components, which means your app sucks. Seriously, you didn't think about it. You need to solve your problem when you're building that, right? So think tap box. There is no native controls in here that they didn't design and build themselves. These are two of the most successful apps in the App Store, and there's a fucking reason for it. Because they kicked ass. That's why. Instead of like building a shitty, Modern equipment of Outlook Express, they chose to build a real app. And that's worth investigating. So that's all I got in this slides. But <laughs> <laughs> that's my answer to components. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah? Um, are you planning to handle um, things that are only present on some of the platforms to support, like notifications, for instance? Like, um, yeah, totally. Yeah, we're, we're just going with impunity and just implementing like, anything that's fucking cool that we need and want. Yeah. So if it's on there and we need it for our clients or want to do it or someone else needs it, ask us to go and form, we'll do it. Or if it's just cool, like the airship guys don't touch this. Uh, what do you think? I'm like, fuck it. It's way easier. Seriously. <laughs> cool. Thanks, everyone. So a quick reminder that um, we're going to be headed over to Produce Row Cafe, which is right across the street. Um, does anyone know the address for the, the cross streets? Oh, um, let me look it up. Basically, like, right over there. People have homes for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>